Hey friends, thanks for joining me, Jim Baroud, to hear a few insights from leaders who represent our innovation ecosystem. Today's chat is with Mark Fleming, the co-founder and CEO of Creator Nova, and Sonia Dominguez, the founder and CEO of Signet Beauty. Sonia, tell us about your entrepreneurship journey. Hi, happy to be here. Um, so yeah, I basically started blogging back in 2013 um, and sharing nail inspo. And that was one of those things that I didn't think much of at the time. It really just started off as like a, a hobby, but it truly did end up changing the trajectory of my life. I found a huge passion for nail art and I was sharing all this inspo, um, grew an audience there. And fast forward to when the pandemic hit, I think I had that moment of realization where I was looking at the press on nail space and felt like there was a need for a more natural looking product, um, something that really put artistry at the center of it. And that's where the idea for Signet Beauty is born. Um, really excited to have just launched recently. We're working on some great stuff for 2022. So very much at the beginning of our journey, but really exciting stuff is happening. Great, I look forward to asking you more questions about that because you know, as a guy, don't know that much about nails and certainly don't know much about nail art. So Mark, go ahead. Tell us about your uh, entrepreneurial journey. It really started when I was working at Alibaba and living in China. I'm born and raised in the United States. This was a new country that I was living in, new atmosphere. And what I realized was that content creators and influencers, they're called KOLs in China, key opinion leaders, they were really the ones driving most of the sales. So that started me thinking of, one, can I become an influencer or content creator? Try that, didn't work. Maybe I can support content creators and influencers. And the number one area that we worked in was beauty. Uh, beauty is one of the highly fragmented spaces, but it's one where a lot of creators play in. So that's why I wanted to focus on create content creators in the beauty space. Great, great. Um, it's really just exploding, right? I mean, it's a great time to be in this space. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to, to learning more from both of you folks who will really uh, know this space well. So Mark, tell us about that transition from Alibaba to what you're doing now with Creator Nova. Yes. So while I was at Alibaba, I was specifically working in a department called Tmall, Tmall Global and Taobao. Taobao is kind of like the eBay Tmall sort of like a Amazon, but only with branded stores. And Tmall Global is for international brands that want to that want to sell into China. And we helped over 50 brands enter the Chinese market and enter the Asian market through Tmall Global. But specifically, we found that the people that had the most consumers ready to go but didn't have the expertise in building a global brand were it was in the beauty industry and most of the consumers wanted more. So me and my co-founder, James Tong, started thinking of ways of, instead of focusing on the manufacturer, maybe if we focused on entrepreneurs and content creators and gave them everything that they need from finding their formulator to their manufacturer down to finding their designer and packaging and marketing, we think that that might be a hit. And so, we're both MBAs, so we obviously do a lot of background work and SWOT analysis and decks. So we originally started talking to the big four beauty companies. We started talking to leaders in the industry. And then we just started randomly some cold calling content creators and talking to some over things like Clubhouse and Twitter spaces. And that's when we really got the idea that we have something here. Let's build a company called Creator Nova to help people go from A to Z and make their dreams possible. Great. And so are you, where are you now in that sort of launch phase? Have you launched uh, officially or, or where are you? We have launched officially. And the first brand that launched was Signet Beauty in November, 2021. Great. All right, good. Let's, well, let's dive into that. So, so tell us, Sonia, uh, what's your vision and how has it changed uh, over the past few years? Absolutely. So I think I was lucky because prior to launching Signa, in addition to my work as a content creator, um, I had some background working at a beauty company. So I was familiar with like the merchandising portion of it. Um, you know, all the logistical stuff that I think is challenging. If you're just coming in as a content creator, you might not necessarily have familiarity with, you know, how 
product development works, um, that whole process, limitations with like minimum order quantities, all of the different intricacies and things that can come up. So we kind of came together, Creator Nova and I <laughs> had a great point because they were kicking off. Um, and initially I was kind of just consulting like, okay, as an influencer, if we wanted to walk through this process with an influencer, hypothetically, nothing was even in stone, but like how would we go about that? What would be the questions that you would have? What would you, you know what I mean? So we kind of were helping each other through that process and I was helping them work through like scripts, how to contact um, content creators, how to make that information digestible for them. And then from there, you know, simultaneously it was like, oh, but also would you want to launch a product? And that had always kind of been in the back of my head. But the more and more I was working through it, I was like, this feels like the right time and the right place and the right people to help me with it. Got it. So explain, you were a blogger or an Instagrammer first. Yeah. And over time, you built this humongous audience. And then you thought about how to sort of create a business from it. Talk to us about that. Absolutely. So I think for myself, like I said, I started blogging when I was in college. And I think I never, entrepreneurship, I guess, was something that I saw for myself because my, you know, I'm a first generation American, my family, uh, you know, immigrants, entrepreneur. My dad, having been an entrepreneur, was, <laughs> he said, if I had your opportunity, I would have just been a doctor or something. It's too much work. <laughs> he tried to talk me out of it because, you know, it is, it is a grind. It is a lot. But that's, I guess, kind of what get, gave me my start is I always wanted to make nail art feel approachable and, you know, like something that you can do at home for yourself. So I think that's kind of the combination of elements, having, you know, seen what goes into building a business, um, having been a person who is part of the demographic, right? I'm a person who does their nails at home. So that's somebody that we'd be targeting. So kind of understanding what the consumer needs, what's lacking, um, what can be improved was a huge help for me. And that gave me, you know, also a springboard to when I launched Signet Beauty, I had this audience that was already engaged with my, with my work and they liked my style. So that was a huge thing for me. So what would you do? Would you do your own nails at home, take pictures of it, show it on Instagram? Is that how it started? Yeah, exactly. At first, like I said, I was just kind of trying to break a nail biting habit. So I was painting them. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, but I don't bite my nails. <laughs> I was working at a beauty counter at the time and one of their top products was cuticle stuff. So I was always my, I was so self-conscious about it. Um, selling a cuticle product my hands looked awful. So I was like, I need to stop. <laughs> So from there, I don't know, it's, it kind of got a little bit more intricate. I think that nail art and, you know, self care in general, the way that we've had that conversation, especially since the pandemic hit, right, has changed so much. And even with stuff like makeup and beauty necessarily, that kind of took a dip um, during the pandemic, things like skincare boomed, because it's something that you do for yourself and you do it to feel good. And I think that the conversation in the nail space that isn't happening is how much nail art can be part of that self-care thing you know it's a small thing that you do for yourself that just makes you feel put together um i don't know for you guys what the equivalent is <laughs> in your routine <laughs> well i know that that you know just to stop people from biting nails like i i've bitten my nails all my life and 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 maybe art. if i if only i had nail art maybe that would have helped <laughs> with my mom would have uh, stressed out a lot uh, less um so okay so you're so you're doing again for for us men who maybe aren't familiar you're painting the designs on nails yeah. you know by yourself for a long time on instagram showing them off and then you decide let's turn this into a business you get help from mark right and then so what are you selling now on Signet Beauty, uh, are you selling pre-done, you know, uh, pre-made artistic nails? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, our vision with um, Signet Beauty. So right now we're um, doing press-on nails, which basically they're ready out of the pack. You apply them on. Um, it makes it a really easy user-friendly product because you don't have to sit there, right, painting it out, which makes it great for people who are in a rush. And our whole kind of vision with it is creating a product that feels really artisan and curated and unique and it has that artistic feel, but it's super accessible. You can put it on in five minutes, you can wear nail art from your favorite nail artist and still have it be something that fits into your lifestyle and your budget. Right. So, and so the, I guess the plan is to expand that sort of product line to include more designs, more artists, I guess, right? 
And, and Mark, what advice did you give to Sonia to, you know, to make this, again, transition from huge influencer to, uh, to a profitable company? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because Sonia was already a huge influencer. So making that transition from being a nail artist creator to being an entrepreneur, I think the major difference is you are now promoting a brand versus yourself. (laughs) And that's sometimes hard because if someone emails you, if someone DMs you to your Instagram, you can just talk as yourself. You can make mistakes. You can delete things. You can say things wrong. But as a brand, it's sort of different. You have to sort of put on like a united front with everyone in your team. That's one is just thinking about yourself differently as a brand. And I think two is trust. One thing that I really love about uh, one, her original Instagram, Bad Girl Nails, and two, Signet Beauty, is that she's so creative. She has so many designs. I mean, this company can go for decades with all the designs that she's already created. And one thing that I talked with Sonia about is even, even as a guy, even if I'm sitting at home and I want to do my own nails, we all wish that we were very creative. But as soon as you get all of the bottles together and the colors, what comes out? It's like we all can't be an artist. So it's actually a huge positive to be able to use her art on someone else's hands. So then we can just sort of pick which press on nails we want to use and put that on for that day. And we don't have to be the person to do the work to be the artist. It's sort of like buying the, seeing the art in a museum and then putting it up in your house versus painting it. So that's, uh, I think those two things, one, separating your creative life from the brand. And then two, just trusting that, yeah, a lot of people just want to have a piece of someone else's creativity because we don't actually want to do it ourselves. So it's great. (laughs) You know, uh, again, I'm, uh, I don't know much about this space, but it just, it it came to me that uh, maybe, thinking about my tween daughters, right? I mean, maybe there should be, are there nail painting parties or does that happen? Or has that ever been something that's worth considering? Because I think, you know, everyone wants to be creative, right? This seems to be a way that everyone could be creative, even if they aren't truly artistic. Does that, and and are you, Sonia, do you have a background in art? So, Absolutely. I think what made my account explode in the first place when I was just posting photos, it was, you know, whatever, it's just another nail blog. What made my account really grow was sharing nail tutorials that were easy to follow and inspiring people to take that step to do their nails at home. Um, you know, I, I think that for me has always been the goal is making it feel like, okay, I can do that myself. You know, obviously sometimes I, whenever I'm watching a tutorial, like home fixing or something, I'm like, yeah, I could, I could, polish my floors I can do it <laughs> but a great tutorial right makes you feel empowered that you can do that yourself and it feels achievable um so I think uh, you know I still absolutely love to share nail art tutorials outside of Signet um and I'm continuing to work as you know as myself as a nail blogger but also tying that into um Signet and giving that visibility of like okay this is the thought process that goes into our product development showing how each design can be hand painted versus, hey, if you don't want to do that, we also have this as a press on nail that you can apply at home within a couple minutes. So it's kind of demystifying that process because I think art can sometimes be intimidating, you know? No, absolutely. Now tell me, uh, you made a a great impact on Instagram, but there are other platforms. You know, you mentioned tutorials. Obviously, a lot of people have been on uh, YouTube and, and TikTok. How do you see the sort of and Mark, you can, you can uh, touch on this as well. How do you see the other platforms uh, as you grow your business? I, a thousand percent, um, even though Instagram is still my largest platform, TikTok is the platform that I've been enjoying the most. The growth is exponential on there. It's so easy that if you're able to kind of break through and connect with an audience, you can't understate the power and influence that TikTok has. And the, the benefit that it has, I think, is it feels more real somehow. I think Instagram, we kind of got used to a very, very, very curated space where everybody, you know, everything is perfect and staged and it looks perfect. TikTok, it's a random person, a random, you know, mom at home posting a gadget that she found on, on Amazon. She could sell it out. 
because it reaches millions of people and then they're like oh my god that's amazing I need that in my life and it feels like a real person is posting about it so I would say for um for business owners for anybody who's wanting to kind of make an impact on social media that platform is definitely the one to watch got it and Mark how do you see uh the, the sector I definitely see that definitely like Sonia said see the trend going towards TikTok and part of the reason uh, I I lived in China when the original started Doyen before it became TikTok in the U.S. so part of the reason if uh, for most of the audience that may not understand why is TikTok just growing so much is that TikTok makes it easy for everyone to be a creator so when you open up the TikTok app, if you open up Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you see what other people are doing and you're sort of more of a watcher of other people. But when you open up TikTok, you see what other people do are doing. But if you like the video, there's a little plus button where you can reenact what they did or you can react to it. They make it super easy. So even if you don't have any ideas of what to post that day, you can just click the plus button and just do what someone else did. That's why you see so many people doing these dances that explode. It's not that they all learn it. They see someone do it. They push, push the plus button. And then TikTok literally shows you how to do the dance. So I think making that sort of world where everyone is a creator, not just the few people here and we're all followers, where we're actually all following each other, but we're all creators. That's really the change that TikTok created. Wow. Wow. And, and, and is that, there's now comp more competition, right? Or, or so they say, right? Reels and um, shorts. Maybe there's something else that I'm not naming. But how do you see sort of the competitive atmosphere amongst platforms um, competing, number one, but also helping, you know, um, influencers or creators uh, as well? Because I know there's been some funds uh, that have been set up. And how do you see that? Uh, Sonia, why don't you start and then Mark and touch on it i think instagram now is kind of um playing that catch-up game a little bit where they're trying to get whatever that spark was on tiktok and, and re replicate it with reels i think for me personally as a user of instagram i do think that um they need to work on their algorithm another huge reason why tiktok is so successful is they kind of once you interact with something and they're like okay you like this you will see videos about it constantly <laughs> It's kind of, it creates like a little bit of a funnel where it's like you're being exposed to, to things. And I don't think that Instagram has done that successfully yet. Um, they are definitely pushing all these initiatives, like you mentioned, the funds and stuff. I think that they're really trying to make it so that instead of content being posted on TikTok first and then recycled to Instagram, they want to have those trends starting on Instagram. So as a creator, um, that now is definitely the time to take advantage of that, especially if you're just starting out. I would say video is up here and photo is here you know beautiful photos are always great and it's it, that if that's your medium then there's a ton of value to it i know a lot of photographers are frustrated with how it's been deprioritized on instagram but if you can make that that switch and provide video or accompany your photography work with video that is going to give you a lot more access and growth and success got it yeah and I'd add that uh, if Instagram, I know YouTube is coming out, I think the YouTube shorts and Snapchat is also trying to do this, that if they can make it more interactive, where it's not just watching someone else do a video where you can see someone do something and then, you know, some basketball trick or something like that, and then they instantly show you how to do it. I think that will make it more viral, enable more people to sort of do it. I think that's something that the other platforms lack, but I know they're working on it. So it competition will definitely heat up. I ultimately think it's good for creators because that just means that there's more spaces for creators to play in. Right. Um, what about Pinterest or Snapchat? Snapchat was my favorite app, social media app. Um, I know it's still used, but I don't see them innovating as much. I think TikTok kind of stole Snapchat's thunder, but I do see that Snapchat is investing in creators heavily now. And I know there's a lot of corporations on Snapchat and some creators are migrating over there. So it, it'll, I think 2022 will be an interesting year to see what new developments and features are added to each app. To jump on too i think for a creator maybe not because it's very hard to grow a community because it's hard to have direct contact through pinterest the comment section is not as robust 
but for a business posting on Pinterest is definitely the way to go. It's such a great way to kind of direct traffic and people buy on Pinterest. You wouldn't think of it beforehand, but people browse through there all the time and it shapes trends. Wait, and I see my, on my daughter's Pinterest, there's like a re um, posting of TikTok videos with yeah. Pinterest or <laughs> I, I didn't understand that at first, but it's really fascinating how people are reposting on all the platforms um, videos from other, other platforms. So it's really interesting to watch. Um, let's see. So, um, again, Mark, same thing, whether it's, uh, Instagram or the other platforms, you're driving business to the website. Is that correct? Is that the sort of the main way to do this? Because I know some, there's some new technology where you can just sell things on, uh, TikTok or, 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 or on Instagram. Have you guys thought about those things? Definitely. And Signet Beauty can be bought right on Instagram as well. We, the way I think about it from the technology perspective is that you want to have the least amount of clicks as possible to get the sale. And this is probably because me, I personally am used to Apple products where I, I want three clicks and done. So one thing that used to happen is create a following on Instagram or Facebook, then try to get them over to your website and then convert them. But as anyone who knows funnel and conversion and social media marketing, at each step, you lose about 90% of people with every click. So you want the least amount of clicks. So what's happened now in Instagram has definitely worked with us on this and Facebook is that they integrate your website into Instagram and Facebook. So you can buy right on Facebook or Instagram. I know TikTok's also uh, previewing some things like this and Snapchat. I think these are some of the features and maybe even YouTube too may come out with that in 2022. So we're very excited about that. I think the less clicks, the better for consumers. Right. And do you have, since you have relationships um, in China and maybe with TikTok and those other platforms, do you have an inside sort of lane to getting sort of, to seeing what's next? I would say sometimes we, yeah, we, we do communicate and talk to the platforms a lot about what's upcoming, but they never want to be preferential to one creator over another. So they'll def definitely let everyone know at the same time. So they don't really pick the winners or losers. But we do, we are in constant contact with every platform about what their next feature might be. Great, great. And how do you see that, Sonia, as far as the, the e-commerce on the platforms? Is that um, really attractive to you? It is. I think as long as they can make it feel as organic as possible to the platform, then, you know, people do want, right? If you see something that you want, to buy, you're, you're convinced by the video, you want it to be as easy as possible. And obviously that does convert. I think where Instagram is kind of having to find that balance is that, you know, the whole replacing the like button with the shop button. Everyone's like, well, what is this? Cause it still has to first and foremost feel like a social channel and not like I'm on like the Amazon app, you know? I think apps are gonna have to kind of find that balance where it still feels like you're in a social media platform and they're putting social first, but it's again, like Mark is saying, you're not having a huge drop off because it's so complicated to add to cart. Got it. And what about your audience, Sonia? How has it, where is your sweet spot or, and has it changed and where is the growth as you see it? So I think, um, you know, my Instagram audience, um, I'm really lucky to have built an amazing, supportive, like interactive community and they're helping me kind of shape the decisions that we make from product development to everything else. So having them feel a part of that process as much as possible is hugely important. I think where we're kind of seeing like um, an interesting split is my Instagram demographic is a little bit leaning like millennial, younger millennial, and TikTok is more so like younger millennial and Gen Z. So two different perspectives of the brand, but still you can find that commonality. Everybody has a mutual interest. Um, but yeah, I think it's just carving out, you know, carving out your niche and finding out who you're talking to. Right. And what about, is it domestic or is it or is it global or do you see growth uh, in other countries? So it's, right now we're domestic only. So Cigna is um, delivering to the U.S. at this time, just because, you know, right now it's with shipping everywhere, right? It's complex too. We wanted to make it as simple as possible for first launch. Um, that being said, though, I do have a good portion of my audience in Canada. 
Um, and, you know, international, we've had a couple of requests of like, when are you guys going to start that? So it's something we're definitely looking into. That's great. That's great. And Mark, how do you see it? Do you see other markets um, really growing um, going forward? I definitely see huge markets and we get a lot of requests from Europe, specifically Eastern Europe, Brazil and India. Those are three areas that we see a lot of traffic from, uh, even to the websites and from creators as well. So uh, and in the beauty industry, actually all three. So I think Eastern Europe, Brazil and India are very high growth markets right now. Got it. Let's switch to funding, uh, Mark. You've seen again, this is your background is in investing. Um, where are you seeing uh, trends uh, in this space? Most of the trends are going to people with unique followings that are differentiated from mass market, if that makes sense. Because you'll hear at once these two separate sentences. Wow, the beauty industry is so saturated right now. And then the second thing you'll hear is, I can't find the product that I want. <laughs> And then you go, oh, so it's overly saturated with sort of the basic products that people have. And that's why at Creator Nova, we focus more on creators because Sonia created the art that's going into the press on nail. So it's quite different than just having your standard, you know, tin color sort of set. So really what people are looking for is things that are specific to them, which Unfortunately for the large brands, it means that the beauty industry is actually going to get more fragmented, but it's going to be sort of super users of specific things. So that's where you see a lot of more investment dollars going into who's figured out some niche in their specific community, whether they're an artist that you can only get the, that type of art from that artist or if they figured out some sort of unique thing, like I have eczema. So someone who's solving that issue for like body cream, just like, great, I'm gonna go to that company. That's where we see most of the investment dollars, either in artists or specific uh, communities. The third area is more in the technology behind beauty creation and how people can do it faster, how you can get things, especially now with supply chain, that's another area of interest, probably for the next five to 10 years is who can figure out the supply chain behind beauty. Yeah, sure. And what about, um, since you have a great following, Sonia, do you ever get approached by brands who want you to promote something or something peripheral to or, or nail related? Yeah, absolutely. So I was um, working as a content creator for a while and creating like product um, demonstrations and nail art tutorial using specific products from other brands. So absolutely, I think, you know, more now more than ever, right, con content is king. <laughs> you need people creating content and generating that interest in your product. So there's a lot of opportunity with that for sure. If you are not quite at the place where you'd want to like get into product development, there's so much opportunity with partnering with these companies and you can make an absolutely make a living out of it. Right. And, and what about there's platforms? Uh, as so I, I heard there's platforms for people, for brands to connect with influencers. Are there any one or two uh, or three platforms that you recommend, uh, you know, uh, aspiring influencers to uh, approach or, or research? So off the top of my, I know TikTok has actually a marketplace that's designed to connect brands and, and creators directly. So that is a huge resource, obviously. Um, there is other, I'm drawing a blank on like the name of any specific website, but if you look for it, you can find it absolutely. Um, and also a lot of times to make sure that your information is accessible so brands can reach out to you directly. Also from Signet Beauty, in our process, we're also obviously like, I have a little bit of a background in influencer marketing too. So we're kind of doing that search ourselves right now. I like to just go through and kind of look and find people who I find inspiring or feel like a good fit. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of different ways to get those opportunities if you just look for them. Right. And Mark, are there any uh, on top of your head? Not off the top of my head, because now I think almost every social media platform is trying to take that in-house, where you'll see TikTok trying to connect their creators with brands, where you'll see Snapchat. Snapchat, I think, has been doing it for a while, for a few years, but I think that that's actually going to grow because people see value in it. And even to uh, if video, Facebook and Instagram, specifically more Facebook, especially as they roll out the metaverse, are paying content creators directly not even through a separate agency. So I think it's gonna, a lot more, it's gonna come on platform. 
Got it. So uh, this has been a great conversation. Um, what about for aspiring influencers or aspiring creators? What's one tip you would give them? Uh, Sonia? One tip I would give them is let go of the pursuit of perfection and start posting now. <laughs> I think it's there's nothing more endearing and humanizing and real than someone posting things that don't go well and you know they're real day to day i think you know there's so much that has changed in our world in the past couple of years and i think that people that whole veneer of perfection has lost its shine for a lot of people um so i don't know it's it's a super intimidating hurdle if you feel like you're not quite ready to start posting but i would challenge you to just share it anyway because you never know who that's going to resonate with great mark and I would say authenticity is number one. It sort of builds upon Sonia's comments. What people want to see is who's the authentic you. And this is for two reasons. One, that's what gra people gravitate towards. You can talk about the good sides of your day and the bad sides. But two is that you can't keep up the fake persona for so long. You might be able to do it for a few weeks or a few months, but definitely not for years because you're going to have to be Basically, working on your posts like six hours a day for the next 10 years, it's very hard to keep up an inauthentic sort of voice. So authenticity is number one. Think about things that you're personally interested in and post about that. Got it. Let go of the pursuit for perfection and start posting today. Be your authentic self. There's nothing more endearing than just being real. And I think that that resonates with people. The facade of perfection has faded. It's lost its appeal in the past couple of years. And I think now more than ever, people want to see the real you and connect with that. So start posting today. You never know who that's going to resonate with. Mark? And I would say authenticity is number one. Think about things that you like in your personal life and post about that. You might be able to keep up a fake persona for a couple of days, but you're going to have to be on these apps for six hours a day for years at a time. So be authentic. Great. Thank you. That was perfect. Okay. So what about, uh, you know, we usually end this with um, a poem or a saying. What would you like to share with our audience? Uh, Sonia, would you like to go first? Uh, let me pull up the quote that I found real quick. So all right, here's a quote that resonated with me. I cannot give you the formula for success, but I can give you the formula for failure. It is try to please everybody. I think as an influencer, as a business, whatever it is that, you know, goal you set for yourself, find what is authentically you and resonates with you and make that the center of everything that you do. Great, thank you. Mark? One of my favorite quotes is a business quote was written by one of the people who worked for, um, for Warren Buffett. He wrote a book called Pleased But Not Satisfied. And I think that's sort of the state of being a creator. You should be very happy with what you post about, but never really satisfied. There's always something else you can do. There's always more that you can give of yourself, more authentic that you can be. So pleased but not satisfied. Great. That's a great quote to end with. I want to thank both of you for coming together for this really interesting conversation. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like it, leave a review, and subscribe. See you soon.